In the previous lesson, we learned how to calculate for the changes of H, which is enthalpy, or the changes of G, or the changes of S, and they all have the same equation is the sum of the product minus the sum of reactants. Well, that is only when we have the overall chemical equation or reaction telling us that we have certain reactant produce product. Just like looking at this case right here. We have reactant producing this product. But the process of making this product right here from this reactant does not involve one single reaction, but rather it involves multiple reactions, like three of these right here. Three of these reactions are required to produce this overall chemical equation. And then each one of those has specific delta H. Now, how is that going to affect us in terms of the delta H reaction of that one? So basically, can you calculate for the delta H reaction of this one here from the given data? Well, there is something called the Hess law. Now, the Hess law basically states that the overall enthalpy changes in a reaction, which is right here, delta H reaction, is the sum of all the reaction. Basically, the sum of all of this, you add all of them together for the process. So the process of this one take three reactions or require three separate reactions. You basically add all of them together, you will get your delta H of this one. Okay. Now here is the most important thing. This part right here. And that is the term independent. Well, independent means that it does not depend on which order it will happen. This could happen first, this could happen first, and this could happen first, and this could happen last. So basically it's like this. Let's say you are hiking and you're going up here. It doesn't matter if you take this path like that. Or you can take a straight path like this way. In the end, you still get there. Does that make sense? So you have your reactants over here. Your reactants, okay? And this will be your product. So it doesn't matter which path you take, you still get your product in the end. And that's the beauty behind the Hess law. You can manipulate this equation to get what you want. In order to use the Hess law, there are three things that you need to look at. Pretty much two things, actually. That is, when you manipulate this equation, that is, if you reverse the equation, that means this product becomes reactant, you would do the same thing to the sign of delta H. Okay? If this is positive and you reverse it, it becomes negative. The other part is that if you multiply the reaction, that means you have to change the coefficient to match one of those. Now, if you multiply the reaction so that you can change the coefficient, so that way it match with this of all, then you have to multiply the values of delta H by the same number. And lastly, you just combine all of them together with the new changes of delta H. So that's a lot of information, okay? And then the main strategy is always look at your overall equation and focus on the substances that are only written once in all the equation. And of course, in the process, you're going to write out the changes. So that way you can keep track of it. So let's do one problem together. From the data below, calculate delta H for the reaction. So basically calculate delta H of the reaction. Okay. In this case, this is the reaction I'm referring to. Now you look at all these right here and you compare it to this. This is our final result. This is the overall. This is what we want to get by combining all the units together. Okay. We realize that look at carbon dioxide, okay? How many times do you see carbon dioxide written? It is only once here, isn't it? You only see carbon dioxide written once. And then carbon, how about carbon? You only see carbon written once as well. Let's circle that. How about that? Okay. But for oxygen, you see it here and there. And what about water? Well, water is not in our thing, so we don't have to focus on it. So what do we want to focus on? Of course, let's start with whatever you see first, carbon dioxide. Okay. Notice how I ignore oxygen because you see oxygen in multiple places here. So for carbon dioxide, 
the overall only has one carbon oxide. So I go over here, but look at this, I have two carbon oxide. And this carbon oxide, of course, is on the reactant side, and this is on the product side. So it's fine. So we don't have to flip the reaction because it's already on the same size already. But I have to make this so that it only have one carbon oxide. So what do I have to do? Of course, I have to divide by two. But another way of dividing by two in terms of multiplication is multiply by one half. So this will divide by two, of course, and that will give us one. And this will divide by two because we multiply by one half. And this same thing right here, oh, there's a little bit of space for that, that's fine, will be multiplied by one. And then we have this one, seven over two multiplied by one half. What's seven over two times one half? Let's show the math. Seven over two times one half give us seven over four. So we have seven over four in that case, okay? In this case, we have to multiply whatever number to our delta H right here, which we will multiply by one half as well. See how that works? Okay, so let's rewrite this. So that way it has become less confusing for us. We have one CO2, and the state of matters is important as well, so we have to write that down. So we have three H2O liquid, producing one half, oh well, this is 3 over 2, producing one half, C2H6 gases, plus 7 over 4 O2, there you go, and this is gases as well, the state of matter is important as well, they have to be the same in order to cancel it out, so that's what we have right there, okay, and of course we can do the math later for that part, the next part is carbon, Okay, and carbon is right here. Notice carbon is on the product side. So do I have to flip the side? No, because it's already on the same size as your overall. Now, what else do we need to do? Oh, look at this. We only have one carbon, but how many carbon do we have here? We have two. So we do the same thing. We have to multiply the coefficient by one half. Okay, so if we do that, this will become, let me rewrite again, one half. Okay, C2H6 gases, and that produces, what is one half times two? Of course, it's one carbon in a solid, and then what's three multiplied one half? Of course, that is three over two of H2 in gases form. Isn't that easy? And of course, we had to multiply this by one half. Then, what's the next thing we have to do? Now is the oxygen. Okay, so look at the oxygen. We have it here and we have it there. But what about the water? Notice how the water is over here and then there's the water right here. But look at the overall reaction. Do you see any water at all? We cannot change or flip this one because this carbon dioxide has to be here, right? So what do we have to do? Well, of course, the only thing left we have to do is to bring that water on the other side so that we can cancel out because of this water on the reactant and this water on the reactant, they would never cancel out. They would add it together, right? So we are going to flip this. We're going to flip this over here. That's one thing. So let's do that. How about that? And if we flip it, what do we have? We have H2 gases plus one half O2 gases producing our H2O liquid, okay? And this is being multiplied by negative one because we flip it, okay? Now, let's check our work. Do we have to do anything else? We know that carbon dioxide is over here, carbon is over there, that's good. The thing we have to realize is that, look at C2H6, do you see any of them on the overall reaction, so they must cancel out. Do they really cancel out? Well, we have one half of it right here and one half of it on the product side. Of course, they cancel out. There you go. Now we cancel that one out. What else do we have? Okay, then we have three half of water. And what else do we have? 
we have one half of water. Ooh, that's very interesting. Okay, so what do we have to do? Notice how we have three half of water here, and then we have one water here. So not only that we had to flip it, we actually had to multiply it by that three half as well. And when we multiply this by three half, what is that going to be? That will give us three half of H2. And what is three half times one half for this part right here? Okay, so three half or three over two times one half give us what? That's 3 times 1 gives us 3, what's 2 times 2 gives us 4. So now, what we have here is going to be 3 over 4. Okay, see how that works? And then what do we have? Of course, this is going to be 3 half of over 2. Okay, notice how I continue to apply pattern to cancel out. So now I can cancel out my water. Okay, which is good, the water cancel out. And the only thing that's left, oh, what about the hydrogen? Oh, well, the hydrogen here is three half, three half. So the hydrogen cancel, well, that's good. And the only thing that's left is the oxygen. And we only want one oxygen. Here we have three four, okay. And that is combining with seven over four. How does that work? Let's look at. 3, 4 minus 7 over 4. So here we have 3, 4. Let's do a basic fraction. Hopefully you remember fraction. Okay. Minus or other way around. So that way we avoid negative. Oh, well, just do negative. Doesn't really matter. 7 over 4. What is 3 minus 7? Of course, that is negative 4. And that is over 4. Give us what? Negative 1. But it doesn't really matter, right? This negative is telling you that this is on the product side. So it doesn't really matter if you take 7 over 4 minus 3 over 4. That will still give us 4 over 4. We just need to realize that this leftover is on the product side because it's where it has more. So that give us, cancel that out, give us 4 over 4 oxygen, which is equal to 1. And there you go. Everything cancel out, giving us our 1 CO2 producing one carbon, and lastly, one oxygen. And that is what we focus on. Which is the overall. After we combine all the equations and simplify them to the point that we get our overall reaction, the next step is adding all the new delta H. Well, of course, we can plug this into the calculator directly using parentheses, first of all, each set is going to be parentheses, okay? So, parentheses, in this case, we have um, 6, 4, 3, time negative 1, time 3 over 2. So, we can use the negative signs right there, okay? So, just to let you see over here, negative sign. Negative sign of into 3, and it's a fraction, 2, time 6, 4, 3, that's one set. Then we add, remember, add all the delta H, we add them together. The next set is this number times 1 half, which is 0.5, so we can say that 0.5 times 190.6, okay? Notice how I don't have to rewrite the number if you know how to use parentheses right there. And then the last part is just add, of course, this number times 1 half, remember? We multiply by 1 half, so 1 half is 0.5 times that number 3, well, 3, 5, 1, 1, 0 0.1, okay? And that gives us our answer of delta H reaction for this right here equal to 866.35 and the unit is kilojoule and that's our answer right there isn't that crazy Whew.